Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, a consultant, audiologist and director of ClearX. Thank you for joining me, I think in my first video for 2026, I hope you all had a good festive period and um, you have no seasonal um, hangover. Um, so this is of a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax, they attend annually. And I suspect they've got a very mild case of surface ear, also known as exostosis. So surface ear is when you have some bony protrusions, like osteomas, which are bony spurs, bony growths, um, in the ear canal. And it's typically as a result of exposure to cold water, predominantly. It can also be cold air. And the pathophysiology behind it is when you get cold water or air in the ear, the bony part of the ear canal, the osseous section, the inner two thirds, it's lined with the thinnest layer of skin, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness, and that's your epidermis layer. The outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion, that has a thicker layer of skin, so it contains the epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous layer. And that's about 10 times thicker, so it's about a millimeter in thickness. And as a result, in the bony part of the ear canal, if you get water in there, um, the periosteum, which is a thin membrane that supplies all the blood and nutrients to the bone, so the periosteum sits on the bone, it becomes somewhat inflamed, and we call that periosteitis, and that then stimulates um, osteoblasts, which are specialised bone cells that um, um, stimulate and encourage new bony growth. And you normally, with um, surface ear, you normally get these bony spurs developing, um, they're normally three, uh, one at the roof of the ear canal, one about four o'clock and one about seven o'clock. Um, and uh, that process is actually called periosteum refrigeration. So due to the coldness, the periosteum um, becomes inflamed, activates osteoblasts, which then stimulate uh, additional bony growth. And those regions, that triangle, if you like, where these bony spurs normally appear, the reason why they appear there is because um, the skin is slightly thinner in that region and there's, uh, so therefore the periosteum is a bit more exposed. Now in this here, this patient's got a solitary one, more uh, about seven, eight o'clock. Um, you can see it on the anterior canal wall, the left-hand side. The right side, um, there's an additional two, there's three in total. Now, it doesn't normally cause a problem uh, unless these osteomas grow really, really large and they occlude the ear canal. And if so, um, an ENT surgeon can drill that away so sound can then travel through towards the eardrum. Um, now, it's very common when I recently went to Australia because the, the, the major cities are on the coast and of course, a lot of the locals, um, they go uh, swimming and diving and surfing, hence the name surface here, in the ocean and where the water is a lot colder. And it's kind of believed that these osteomas form that the evolutionary reason why is to protect the eardrum. So if you're going diving um, and you've got a sudden surge of water going into your ear canal, these additional bony spurs protect the eardrum. They kind of slow down that force of water to prevent the eardrum from perforating. So we call that barotrauma. Um, an osteoma is somewhat different. An osteoma is normally um, just a single bony growth, a bit like the left ear, if truth be told. Um, it's normally unilateral, one ear, it's solitary, you get one of those. And uh, again, they're harmless, they're non-cancerous, bony kind of spurs. Um, they can also develop around the sinus, nasal region. Where else can they? I'm just having a look at my notes. Um, around the skull. Now, with an osteoma, it can be linked to a syndrome called Garner syndrome. Um, and Garner syndrome, one of the other symptoms of those of that is multiple polyps in your colon. So it's advised that if you do have an osteoma that you, you do see your GP. So this ear, this is the worst ear actually, I'll just show you the left one first. The wax is a bit more mushier, it's softer. So I've just put some olive oil in, just like I did with the left side. And the oil works a treat here. It, it's a bit blurry because of the oil, uh, but the oil binds, coagulates this wax plug together and it comes out in a singular piece. Normally there's always some 
residue and some remainder in the anterior recess, uh, which is a little widening near the eardrum on the right hand side. So you can see there's a bony protrusion on the right, there's one at the top there near the eardrum, but there's also one a bit further out in the midsection of the ear canal. There, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. I've got a still shot for you guys, so you'll see the wax on screen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, speak soon. Bye.